good-looking folks in Illinois, I'll tell you that much. I love you. Which begs the question, what state are you from? <laughs> I'm only serious. All right, anyway. No, I'll see you at the house. God bless you. Thank you. We're going to have fun tonight. I tell you, I done a show last night, and the folks that didn't walk out on me really enjoyed it. So, uh... <laughs> I was like picture everybody naked when I first come out. You know, I'm not nervous or nothing. I'm just a pervert, so. <laughs> there you, go. you need to put your clothes back on right here. What, the heck? Ah, what is that? <laughs> you should picture me without clothes on, then you'd be laughing so hard I wouldn't have to tell any jokes up here. <laughs> Sorry about my outfit. I just come from a wedding, so I apologize for that. It was a weird wedding, too. They had the father-daughter dance. They ended up leaving together. <laughs> All right, one more joke like that. I'm getting the hell out of here. All right, because that's, that's uncalled for right there. I guess I should do this, Gator Doug. That's right, Gator Doug. You know, the first phrase, that wasn't my original phrase. The first one I come up with was, Yipper dipper ripper stripper. I know, right? It wouldn't fit on a hat, plus I don't know what the hell it means. All right. No idea. I was going to uh, work out this morning, but I, uh, I woke up with the sweat, so I figured I already had it in there. So, uh, <laughs> almost didn't make it here tonight. Uh, I hate flying an airplane, and I'd fly to meet my bus, and I hate flying them daggone airplanes, and the daggone airport wouldn't let me bring my emotional support stripper with me on the airplane. <laughs> I ain't kidding. When that plane gets going like that, if I can't motorboat a pair of titties, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it was so windy where I lived one time, I lost my hat, two cigars, and my neighbor's house. Lost his house because one of my cigars blowed in his trailer and burned his house down. All right, so let's keep that to ourselves. It got out of control, too. It burnt down Cheryl She Shed. All right. That's right. Now you know the whole story right there. You know the whole story. Tonight's a special night for me. Tonight is the 10 year anniversary when my hometown gave me the keys to the city and had a little parade for me. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Remain seated. Thank you. And tomorrow's the 10 year anniversary again when they uh, changed all the locks in the city. Right. Well, it's cold winter time again. You like the winter? I hate it. I like summer better than winter. That winter kills me. My weenie's been in any for the last five days. I ain't kidding. I could flash a cop and not get in any trouble right now. It snowed the other day. I could only pee my initials in the snow, all right? But my upper body loves cold weather. My lower body can't handle it. I wish they'd get together on the weather. It gets cold out. You can play this little piggy on my daggum neck. He hates it, but they love these little piggies went to market. Yeah, well, that little hog stayed home, all right? I'll guarantee you that. It's cold everywhere. I was in Los Angeles, California. It's so cold I seen a junkie with his tongue stuck to the spoon. All right. <laughs> My wife's from Wisconsin. You think you guys get cold? Go to Wisconsin. Holy smokes. We's up there Thanksgiving. You know how cold it was up there? <laughs> that sucked. Uh, <laughs> it was so cold in Wisconsin, the ice cream machine at McDonald's was working. Now, I like hot weather. I like when it's hot and humid. I love that. I lived in Florida for a long time. I love hot and humid. It was so hot down there one time, I seen a squirrel putting talcum powder on his nuts. <laughs> now, I don't like it when it's hot and humid, and I got to wear blue jeans everywhere. Holy mack, i walking like this. Uh, we filmed four episodes of Swamp People in my pants. All right. <laughs> It was bad. I went in for a physical, dropped my underbritches, three mushrooms fell out. I ain't kidding. That explains why I kept getting followed by that truffle pig right there. I knew that, but 
I was two days away from them declaring my crotch a wetland area. <laughs> but they try to scare everybody now with the heat, don't they? Try to scare you, make it hotter than it is. When I was growing up, 99 degrees, 99 degrees. Now it's 99 degrees out, but the feels like temperature's 103. <laughs> the feels like, who come up with that? A fisherman, the feels like temperature? Stupid. You know what? My wiener's three inches, but it feels like nine. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, my wife sent me up to the grocery store all by myself the other day to get some feminine products. You know. Celery, carrots, lettuce. I had to buy some chewing tobacco so I didn't look like a pajama boy sissy in there. <laughs> Anybody chew tobacco? Yeah. That guy, ma'am, you? All right, perfect, that's good. <laughs> I like chewing tobacco, but I only do it because it keeps me from eating sugar and eating bad food late at night, so you can see that's working out real good for me right now. That's, now I'm fat and I got bad teeth, what the hell? I hate that grocery store self-checkout. What in the world? All the enjoyment of working at the store without the satisfaction of getting a paycheck. That's always nice. You like self-checkout? I hate it. Every time I go in there, I get stuck behind some idiot trying to find a barcode on a cucumber in there. <laughs> you ever done this? You ever buy a Kit Kat bar? You got like 12 items, you got a Kit Kat bar, and then they look at you and go, you gonna take that or you want that in the bag? That's when you know you're a fat ass right there. <laughs> I know. They pissed me off last week. They done that with potato salad I had in there. I know. And they put a napkin and a fork on the daggum thing for me. Have you ever seen somebody at the grocery store? You ever seen a fella in there staring at a head of cabbage? I was up there one time. I seen a dude all by himself staring at a head of cabbage. I got a theory about that. That guy's wife sent him up there to get a head of lettuce. All cabbage ought to come with a label on it that says, this is not what your wife wants you to buy. <laughs> Three days before Thanksgiving, my wife sends me up to the grocery store to get some yams. 45 daggum minutes, I'm looking for yams. I can't find a daggum yam. I come home, I said, they ain't got no yams up there. He goes, you mean to tell me three days before Thanksgiving they don't got no sweet potatoes at the grocery store? <laughs> I'll be right back. Christmas is my favorite time of year. It goes too quick. But you know, at our house, we celebrate Christmas every day, and I'll tell you why. Two reasons. Number one, we love the Lord Jesus. He was born on Christmas Day. That's why we celebrate. And uh, number two, uh, my sister looks like Burl Ives. <laughs> I don't eat good at Christmas, I'll tell you that much. I got a Fitbit on Christmas Eve. I put it on, it dialed 911. <laughs> You know what killed me at Christmas last year, food-wise? The Kentucky Fried Chicken 12-day advent calendar. <laughs> Holy smokes, them five golden wings had me turtle doving all the way to the bathroom. I guarantee I ain't kidding. I could have dropped my pants and dropped a partridge out of a pear tree right there. I guarantee you. Every time I start getting a little too fat at Christmas, so my kids will buy me a Christmas gift to hint around that I'm too fat. You know what they got me last year? A Petri dish with flesh-eating bacteria. <laughs> we run our kids up to the Walmart last year to see the Christmas village up there. We wasn't there more than 10 minutes. Somebody was already running a meth lab out of the gingerbread house. <laughs> I mean, I love shopping at Walmart, but gum, that's like a meth maker's paradise in there, ain't it? <laughs> Walmart's the only store in the world you can go and see somebody buying 16 boxes of cough syrup 
and some garden hose. Nobody thinks that's weird. <laughs> you ever shot at Walmart after midnight? Holy smokes. Oh, they ought to charge a cover charge in there after midnight. That gum, it's like a casting call for Ripley's Believe It or Not in that place. $20 for a haircut. Actually, $5 for a haircut. $15 for the hat you gotta wear next three weeks. <laughs> Got a doctor's office up at the Walmart. Holy smokes, people going in there. I was there the day they gave a guy three months to live in there. And uh, he ended up getting hired as a door greeter once he walked out that door. I had to go get a flu shot one time. I didn't want to go to the doctor. And my wife goes, well, shoot, run up to Walmart. They're giving flu shots. Are you kidding me? I ain't getting a flu shot at Walmart. That gum, normally I got to get vaccinated before I go in there. Get a flu shot at Walmart. The flu's the last thing I'm worried about at Walmart, all right? That gum, they probably got Ebola behind a box in there somewhere I didn't know about. I was up there one time, there was a dude out front in a hazmat suit. I'm like, is it safe to go in there? He goes, yeah, why? I go, you're in a hazmat suit. He goes, I know, I work here, I'm collecting the carts. So every time I go up my local Walmart, I'm friends with a lot of folks up there, but every time I go up there, I see Doug. I always wave to Doug. I walk in, what's up, Doug? Doug kind of, eh, you know, every time. Hey, Doug, let me ask you something. Have you ever called somebody the wrong name for about five years? <laughs> hey, they don't even acknowledge you're calling them the wrong name just make you look like a douchebag for five years. Well, I finally got to talking to Doug three days ago. Her name's Denise. <laughs> so my buddy ran it out. He wanted to save money on his wedding. He ran it out of Walmart, got married at a Walmart. It was unbelievable. Got married in the jewelry department, and we had a reception in the deli over there. And we all got our pictures took in the photo booth. And then we left, they had the honeymoon in the men's room. It was unbelievable. It was a wedding made in China. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten a wedding invitation from somebody that you barely know? What the hell? It's like getting a bill in the mail. I hate weddings. I was the one a while back, holy smokes, I ain't seen the bride was overweight, but whew. My buddy caught the garter belt. He's still been using it to tie up cordwood on his pickup truck. <laughs> My mother-in-law, last month, won $400 in a hot dog eating contest. It's unbelievable, $400. 40 hot dogs in 10 minutes she ate. I couldn't believe it. My mother-in-law, not talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> I know. Oh, she talks. I know. She can talk. She's the only woman at the beach getting melanoma on her tongue. All right, I guarantee you. I'm not a big gambler. Uh, my, my grandma, holy mackerel. I'm not saying she's addicted to blackjack, but she's got a medical alert bracelet on that says, in case of emergency, split the kings. <laughs> My wife likes to go with me when I go to Las Vegas because she likes to go see the Chippendales. Yeah. You know why she likes going to the Chippendales? She didn't marry very good. <laughs> she married a Chunkendale. She gives me money to put my clothes back on, but she does. I like going out there to Las Vegas. That's where you see all the 1970s, 80s classic rock bands singing out there. Now, I like them bands. 
Hey, only difference between seeing them bands now and 30 years ago, 30 years ago, go backstage, smell like pot everywhere, and now it smells like pot and Ben Gay, you go back to them things. <laughs> they all still got long hair, too. Ain't that some? Huh. Unfortunately, it's coming out their nose and ears on most of them fellas in there. Here's one thing you never want to hear a classic rock band say when you go to concert. Here's one off our new album. <laughs> Honey, let's go get a beer. Nobody wants to hear that <laughs> shit. I went to see Molly Hatchet one day. That was awesome right there. I like old Molly Hatchet. You know what was cool about it? After the concert was over, true story, I got to go in the lobby and take a picture with all the cardboard cutouts of the original member. <laughs> I like going to the buffets out there, the casino buffets, they delicious. You ever been to the all-you-can-eat pasta buffet at the casino? Holy smokes, that's the day I got red flagged by the plumber's union right there. I tell you what. Whew. I had to keep a hard hat by the toilet for three weeks after I went in there. You ever use all the paper and have to end up finishing it with the tube? Have you ever done that at all, anybody? I haven't done it. I'm asking if you've had to do that. I ain't done that. We got a winner right here. We got a winner. <laughs> People got no manners at them dadgum buffets. There was a guy actually sitting at the buffet. Pissed me off. I walk up there. You know you ain't supposed to stick your face right in the deck. Ooh, I felt bad. He was in a wheelchair. Oh, man. Believe me, I felt bad. Not as bad as I felt, though, when I pushed him out of the way. I'll tell you that. Get out of the way, roller boy. I'm about to make some bad decisions right here. I love that Golden Corral. That's a good restaurant right there. Oh, that is good in there. They ought to have a scoring system, a Golden Corral, like they do in bowling, you know? You walk in there to eat, they put your name up on the TV screen and show everybody how much food you ate after 10 trips to the buffet. You can pick teams and compete with other fat folks in there. That'd be something. Hey, sweetheart, where's my stretch pants? It's league night at Golden Corral tonight. I seen a couple get engaged at the Golden Corral. <laughs> hey, fellas, here's a tip. If you're gonna ask your girl to marry you at a Golden Corral, get down on two knees and do it so she can't kick you in the nuts. <laughs> People got no manners at them dadgum buffets. There was a guy actually sitting at the buffet. Pissed me off. I walk up there. You know you ain't supposed to stick your face right in the deck. Ooh, I felt bad. He was in a wheelchair. Oh, man. Believe me, I felt bad. Not as bad as I felt, though, when I pushed him out of the way. I'll tell you that. Man. Get out of the way, roller boy. I'm about to make some bad decisions right here. I love that Golden Corral. That's a good restaurant right there. Oh, that is good in there. They ought to have a scoring system, a Golden Corral, like they do in bowling, you know? You walk in there to eat, they put your name up on the TV screen and show everybody how much food you ate after 10 trips to the buffet. You can pick teams and compete with other fat folks in there. That'd be something. Hey, sweetheart, where's my stretch pants? It's league night at Golden Corral tonight. I seen a couple get engaged at the Golden Corral. <laughs> hey, fellas, here's a tip. If you're gonna ask your girl to marry you at a Golden Corral, get down on two knees and do it so she can't kick you in the nuts. <laughs> I was down in Branson, they got stuff down there, buffets, holy smokes. They got an international buffet in Branson. It is crazy. They got food all the way from Memphis. <laughs> got a double-decker buffet. They got a double-decker, one of the world's largest buffets, double-decker, spiral staircase. All right, that's just what all us fat folks have been clamoring for right there.
a buffet with a staircase. <laughs> I'm gonna get some more of them donut holes. They're upstairs. You know what? I'm all right, I guess. I'll be all right. Stay down here, get some meatballs, put some powdered sugar on them. That's what I do right there. A lot of old folks down there in Branson riding them scooters down there. I find that crazy. These folks have lost their driver's license two decades ago, but they're going to go ahead and let them have motorized vehicles in a room full of pedestrians at the buffets down there. <laughs> Trying to get food. They're zipping by like it's a drive through I went up to get some potato salad. It was like I was in a live Frogger game all of a sudden. He's like, yeah. got hit head on by some old dude trying to text and drive. <laughs> he trying to send a crop shot to Tinder, apparently. <laughs> I was uh, at a restaurant one time. You ever been to these restaurants and you go to the bathroom? It could be any restaurant, but you go to the bathroom and they go take a leak in there and they got a sign that says, all employees must wash hands. That scares the hell out of me right there. They need a sign to tell these folks to wash their hands? I mean, what the hell makes me wonder what kind of sign they got back in the kitchen we can't see back there? Don't snot in the coleslaw. Don't dip your scrotum in the salsa. Hey, that actually happened one time. That's a true story. You remember that story? A waiter was mad at a customer and dipped his scrotum in the salsa. Oh, that's why I always ordered a hot cheese dip. <laughs> yeah. We live in a great country, though. I tell you what, these people bitch about our country. This is an awesome country. We got, do you realize there's a buffet on every street corner in this country? Other people starving. You ever see that starving kid commercial? For eight cents a day, you can feed a starving child, eight cents a day. That gum, you can't keep a gerbil alive for eight cents a day. That gum, I go through 270 bucks a day and I'm on a diet. <laughs> Reading an article in the paper the other day, a fella jumped off some mountain with one of them kites, Batman kites and it didn't work and he slammed into something and killed him. And it said, diver dies because of freak accident. <laughs> freak act, that ain't a freak accident. You're, you jumped off a building with a kite on your back. <laughs> That's a dumbass accident is what that is. A freak accident. Ain't a freak, a I'll tell you what a freak accident is. You're down there at the local, you know, stop and shop down there and getting gas, and unbeknownst to you, there's two clowns in a knife fight. And one of them falls and stabs you in the face. That's a freak accident right there, all right? read another article one time. This is why I don't like polls. I see an article, they said they polled in Washington, D.C. They polled 2,500 women. Said, now that Bill Clinton's way older, would you sleep with Bill Clinton? Unbelievable. 94% said not again. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. All right. I'll stay. I'll stay. All right, you convinced me. I'm going to hang out for a while. <laughs> Remain seated. Stupid polls. Well, the polls indicate I ain't never been polled. You ever been polled? I ain't been polled, been polled, been polled, been polled, been polled, been polled. <laughs> There's only one poll I ever trusted. That's the polls I do at my shows. And I done one last night, and I believe this. I polled all my audience last night. 87% of them said at this point in time during my show, they want their money back. <laughs> I've been, uh, well, he's one of the 13%. <laughs> 87, 13, yeah, 13% right there. Yeah, right? I know my dadgum math. 
<laughs> you know, I work a lot of fairs. I love working fairs. It's awesome because I grew up in fairs and I love fairs. What has happened to the clientele at the fairs lately, though? Holy smokes, I was up there the other day. There's a dude walking like he's bleeding from the nose, you know, walking like he got a daggum fart stuck sideways heading down that thing. Down there. Looked like a Greyhound bus overturned. He came walking in trying to get help or something. I mean, it's unbelievable at these fairs. By the way, anybody ever ride a Greyhound bus? I used to ride them back in the early days of comedy. Holy smokes, only thing slower than a Greyhound bus is the people on the daggum bus. <laughs> They're a good value, though. I went from Sanford, Florida, all the way to Lincoln, Nebraska one time, $49. Oh, man, 119 days. <laughs> Holy smokes. And the big selling point at the time was now with more leg room, what they needed was more headroom so I could have hung myself halfway through the trip. A couple years ago, my grandma uh, playing bingo at the fair won her a spa package. But uh, I'll be honest, I think they gave her the wrong package. Uh, she said that uh, she was able to tolerate the Botox but uh, during the Brazilian whack, she farted and blinded the attendant. Lord, I apologize for that right there and be with the starving pygmies down in New Guinea. Amen. Bless you. I saw my grandma topless two weeks ago. Oh, that's the last time I let her drink before a concert. I'll tell you that much. That kind of, it was embarrassing. It was windy out, so... Her boobies was flying around like one of them inflatable wind dancers in front of an oil chain shop, you know what I mean? It is horrible. The Oak Ridge boys didn't even want to do an encore after they saw that. Thanks a lot, Grandma. Your flapping titties just cost me an encore of Giddy Up Oom um, Papa Mau Mau right there, all right? I kid my grandma. My grandma's awesome. She's actually a widower. She's trying to, she's trying to meet some fellas now. She's on one of them uh, elderly dating services. She went on the internet now. Met a mutual mingle. She's been on that now for a while. I think she's on medical marijuana. I ain't sure, but uh, she gave us a quilt the other day made out of Taco Bell wrappers, so there's something going on there. We almost lost my granddad. He's 93 years old. He almost passed away on us. He almost lost him on the toilet. He almost died on the toilet. Boy, what a way to go right there. Whew. Can you imagine dying on the toilet? I mean, what do you say to the relatives at the wake to make them feel better? I mean, that's a tough one there. Yeah. Mrs. Egerhoff, we're... We're real sorry here about Ed, man. That's, oh, but at least he died doing what he loved. You know, that's the kind of thing we, we, we heard he fought till the bitter end, and that's the thing. He, he wasn't a quitter, so he got it out, and we're excited, and that's nice. And we're going to light a match tonight and remember him at midnight, and hopefully... I read a story one time, a fella got bit by a snake sitting on the toilet. He got interviewed and said, first thing I thought was I need to call animal control. That's the first thing he thought. If I got bit by something similar, first thing I'd think is, what the hell did I eat last night? <laughs> that gum, my, my food's circling back on me here. <laughs> but we almost lost my grandpa. He sat on one of them power flush toilets. You ever see them energy savers? You flush it, just like, go like that. I mean, if you sit on it flush, it'll put a hickey on your hind end, I guarantee it. It will. But he sat on there, flushed it, boom, left nut down the drain. I ain't kidding you. True story, I wish it wasn't, but that's a true story. 
I'm trying to help him out. I'm trying to yank him off that thing right here. It's stuck in that little tube hole in there. It's like they're going to stretch Armstrong. Like, and finally, it come loose slow motion right at my daggum head. It hits me. Boom, 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 boom. It was like them little knocker balls. You ever see them little knocker balls? There? Boom, 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 boom. Bloodied my daggum nose. My wife's like, what's going on in here? Uh, his twig and berries went MMA on me is what happened in there. I have had it. And it stinks getting older and fatter. And I used to be something back in the day, boys. I used to be something. I did. I used to run cross country. You Google it. I think I still hold the state record for taking the most <laughs> in the woods. But I'm on a diet now. I'm eating nothing but fruit loops. But my wife has me on a... <laughs> my wife has me on a diet now where I can have one cheat day. So I can have a hamburger with the cheese and the bun one day a week. Or any time I drive by a fast food restaurant when she's not with me in the car. All right, I do. <laughs> she's a stickler too, I'll tell you what. She'd be up here sleeping at 2.30 in the morning, the dog go down there, bark at the door for 10 minutes. She don't hear nothing. She's racked out. I got to go down there and let the dog out. So the next day I go down there, I'm kind of hungry. I pour a little, little bowl of Cap'n Crunch down there. I hear, get out of Cap'n Crunch! <laughs> what the hell? I should have barked when I poured that Cap'n Crunch in there, but I should have done. It sucks getting old and fat, I tell you. I remember when my beard turned white, my, my, my wife was like trying to comfort me. Oh, that's okay, honey. I like somebody with a little salt and pepper in their beard. Made me feel a little better. Then she goes, it's the corn in your teeth that's disgusting. <laughs> I was going to say broccoli, but none of y'all believe I eat broccoli. All right, so I'd say that. Uh, here's the thing about getting older, you start losing your daggum memory. I can't, I have a hard time remembering stuff now. It's so frustrating. Have you ever left your groceries on the roof of your car? Yeah, for three weeks? <laughs> I'm a hypochondriac. I always think I'm dying of something, I'm freaking out. Had a red blotch right there one time for a week. It's freaking me out. So I go get a biopsy on it. Tested positive for picante sauce. <laughs> idiot. Cost me a thousand dollars to do that. Good news is he wrote me a prescription for napkins, so that's pretty good, I guess. I always think I'm dying. Don't ever look nothing up on the internet, because it ain't good. It's always lupus or Lou Gehrig's. That's what it is. One of them, too. I think I got both of them damn diseases. Seen a commercial the other day for breast implant leakage. I had every damn symptom of a breast implant leakage in there. These stupid things. I ain't kidding with you. Don't ever look it up. It's always lupus. Except for one time I had a lump right here. And honestly, I'm like, what the hell? I look it up. Oh, brain cancer. That's, that's it for me. I'm a dead man. I got brain cancer. You never learn nothing on the internet medically looking it up. Except one time I did. I found out that jock itch is also the name of a porn star in France. <laughs> and what is it about getting in your mid-50s, your big toenails like a manhole cover all of a sudden? <laughs> Holy smokes, I went to clip it the other day, the pin popped out of the clipper system in there. <laughs> Holy smokes. Finally, I chip it off, hits my kid in the head, knocks him out, he's bleeding from the eyeball. 